I have eight questions here and the dice tower behind me selects them for you. They are all totally harmless. You get three rolls on the tower and whatever roll I roll for you, that's where we start. Okay. What is a little thing in your life that makes you happy? Something that may seem seemingly silly to someone else out there, but it brings you joy on a regular basis. Coloring, I would say. Kind of silly, but um, you never, you, you never feel uh, aggravated after you color. So I guess that's, that's, yeah, that's what I'm going with. What is the movie that you've rewatched the most often? You know, I, I rewatch this year I've rewatched Death Becomes Her probably I probably have watched it oh probably seven times this year, I wanna say truly. So um yeah, that's that's my recent all time re rewatching. I am obsessed with looking at everybody's IMDB trivia pages because you always find like the weirdest, most random things on them. You don't have very much on your page though. It's like five things. So if you would add like a super silly fact about yourself to that page, what would it be? <laughs> I'm really just going off of what's coming up in my head. So don't judge me. But um, when I was, uh... When I first moved across country to Toronto, it was, uh, you know, the beginning of the school year. So September, October, it was Halloween. And I wore um, this ladybug costume. I like was a giant ladybug and I was maybe seven years old. And um, for the rest of my time at that school, everyone called me ladybug. Um, so that's not a very, I mean, I would do <laughs> with that what you will, but. <laughs> That's like, maybe, I guess I, I wouldn't add that, but if somebody added that, I would think it was uh, okay with, with me. What's up, everyone? Welcome back for a brand new edition of Collider Ladies Night. I am beyond thrilled to welcome Taylor Russell to the show. You are phenomenal in Bones at All, but I think I've been dying to have you on this show since Escape Room because I am obsessed with those movies. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Okay. This is giving me better context. <laughs> what is the movie, personal experience, performance, you name it, that first made you say to yourself, I have to be an actor and nothing else? I mean, probably Girl Interrupted. I know that's a probably an, an answer that a lot of uh, actresses give, but for good reason. I mean, um, the performances in it are so uh, varied and... Uh, complex and uh and I loved all of those characters and I felt like I wanted to kind of do each of them um but you know actually before that the movie that I think I really fell in love with and wanted to act which is crazy is The Mummy I loved The Mummy with Brent Brendan Fraser who I'm so happy for his, what's happening in his career right now I have to say because he was my first crush um but I would watch that every morning and I remember thinking, wow, Rachel Weiss is, is like not from this earth. And uh, yeah, so, so that's, that's my, that's my dual answer. A lot of times I hear the term like breakthrough role thrown around out there, but I know in reality, it can feel different to the person having the breakthrough role. Your Wikipedia page designates escape room, your breakout role. Did it feel that way to you? And if not that, what is the role that made you feel like, like I am here, I'm doing it now. And I have confidence that I'm going to go forward strong. Oh, great question. Um, you know, it's, I, well, Escape Room is the first, um, studio movie that I worked on. And I, so I had never worked on anything of that magnitude before in terms of, um, you know, how many people were on set, the types of sets. I mean, when I would go and see, you know, the, the set design, I was so blown away all the time. I think that's the thing that I remember the most about, um, about shooting those movies is, that the the art in them was incredible and and the amount of hands and hours that takes is is expensive and takes a lot of resources so uh in that way you know i felt like i was in a period of big learning and um kind of had to step up in some degree but um i did this movie waves that i really loved and that was the first time that i felt like maybe expanded in terms of um artistically what where I could stretch and I learned also that I really like being stretched creatively and I like being being uncomfortable so um 
I guess the definition of, of a uh, breakout is different <laughs> in for a person as you, in your words versus what other people would say. But um, yeah, I don't know. They've all kind of been breakouts in, in a way. Of all of your co-stars, which one would you say had the most similar process to your own? Where like the second you hit set, you immediately fell into step with one another. But then who's someone else who maybe challenged you to adapt and maybe even adapt and try something new for the better? The somebody that I felt in step with immediately was Timmy. Like I'm much, I, I think, m more introverted in a lot of ways um, where I can, you know, I need some coaxing out of my shell a lot of the time. Um, but in terms of meeting, um, meeting the challenges that, you know, come up day to day on a set, whatever those are, uh, you know, I think that I think that something we share in common is, um, you know, your heart leading and then the, the freak out coming after that, but, uh, but the heart being first. So in that way, that, that, that's a very specific alignment, but is something that, um, feels really good creatively because, you know, you, you trust that the other person is going to be there, um, to, uh, to kind of inspire creatively. So, probably him. And then, um, somebody who, I mean, I've worked with a lot of incredible actors who have been doing it longer than I have. And all of them have done it in a way that I don't do it and that I have learned from. So I, I can't pick one person. Um, Mark Rylance is a great example because he was in, uh, Bones and All as well and gives a very, uh, masterful performance in our film. Um, but he's somebody who, you know, is on set, uh, when he doesn't need to be is sitting, is watching everything, is really, uh, s sinking into the environment, um, in a way that I admire and, uh, just made me feel like, okay, I can, I can implement some of these um, some of these attributes in my life and my acting and, uh, and, you know, and just rest in the, the chaos of a space or the calmness of a space and, and know that that's okay. I was reading in the production notes for Bones and All, I think, uh, I think it was Timmy that said it, that you are always willing to try something new and that's what he admired about you. So what's an example of a new technique that you tried for the first time on Bones and All that maybe you're eager to do on future projects going forward? Well, part of what I love about our characters in the movie, um, we were we just watched this scene the other day for this we had, for this other interview and um, and it really struck me watching it how Timmy's um, body language and what he did through Lee what they did through each other and I think that's a really cool thing to focus on when you're doing a new character is how does this person walk and um, and my shoes in the movie were. Uh, these big heavy boots and I before I started Lucas said to me you know you you walk more gracefully you cannot walk like that um for this character so let's find it like find 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 what she does with her with her body and her feet and I was thinking about it a lot and um you know Julia Parasanti the incredible costume designer on our film uh got these army boots for me and uh, they were so worn in and, and so heavy in the sole, like they felt like they had lead in the bottom. So that just brought me down and it turned my knees out in a certain way. And um, I couldn't not feel heavy footed and feel like it changed my shoulders when I walk. So I, I knew that, you know, from um, uh, studying that I've done in my own way that, you know, body is everything. Uh, our body language is everything for an actor, but, um, but the shoes really change it all. Uh, so that's something that I would, that I'm going to, you know, be thinking about a lot. And, uh, I think people will notice that hopefully in the movie too, with, with Lee and Marin, that both Timmy and I, um, were, you know, that was definitely on our minds is, is, uh, how we were 
moving our bodies. I've grown a little bit obsessed with a quote that I heard from Joe Wright, and he was talking about directors when he said this, just this idea of a director shouldn't take on a script unless they have a secret about that script. So what was your secret about Marin that was purely your own when you jumped into the role? I can't tell you. <laughs> okay, I respect that. <laughs> but but what's but but you know what? I think some I think uh things are secrets, but they're also not at all because because humans we emit so much that we have no idea. Well, for example, I thought, you know, some you know, I didn't think people saw certain elements of me that were maybe more hidden, but Luca saw them immediately. So I felt very, you know, emotionally naked in front of him. Um, and I would, and he knows all of a lot of my secrets, I would say. Um, and I'm sure that when people watch the movie, maybe not knowing specifically, they will know secrets about me, which is the, the scary thing about your work being seen by people that you don't know. Um, but the beautiful thing about it, of course, and, and the important thing, um, but specifically, no, I'm much too, <laughs> I couldn't, when you and I, how about this? When, when we're going out, when I see you in person and we're at dinner, I will tell you, and, uh, it'll be between, between us and we can share that, that trust circle. <laughs> Deal, deal, deal. <laughs> when the time comes, I'm there for it. I won't forget. This is probably a complicated thing that might not have a clear cut answer, but I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about the eating scenes because those feel especially complex to me. So I'm curious what kind of goals you had for yourself and what kind of conversations that you had with Luca, just in terms of, you know, like on, on the surface, it can look like an act of horror, but also you need to convey that you know, it's being done out of necessity for Marin, that it is satiating her. But then on top of that, you need to convey that, like, there's there's sadness in the act that she needs to do. So I don't know, I guess, I guess like, how do you find the, the right balance to make sure everything is on display, but nothing is overpowering the other too much? Oh, yeah, another great question. Um, and something that, you know, what's really uh, cool is that I didn't, I, I as an actor, as an actor, I felt like m most of my most of the journey for me, the hard stuff on this um, shooting bones and all, would be getting the emotional beats right. And always, that's what keeps you up at night. Like, did I give everything that I needed to give here? Oh, I wish I could go back and do that again. Or this scene is coming up, and I have these ideas about it. But what it, will it actually turn out being? And will I meet my ideas of the scene? Um, and so because that was so present in my brain in a way, I felt like kind of from the beginning, the, the, I could, the thing that I didn't have to worry about would be the cannibalism because we did a camera test upstate New York and Luca um, kind of made it known and felt that the cannibalism was just a thing. It was just like, like a chrysalis that these people were in. It wasn't, um, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the most, ex definitely not the most important or exciting thing about who these people are at all. So in a way, like it would be if I um, maybe was uh, playing a, a dancer or a boxer or something, you think about the, the physicality, but if anything, it's just the, the period of the emotional stuff coming out. It's like the final, it's the stamp on it. And, um, and, and because of the technicality of it, it didn't feel, you know, it didn't feel, it just felt like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. And this is a very tactile thing. And, um, it didn't feel gruesome or strange in a, in a way it felt like, uh, I don't know that it wasn't that big of a deal, I guess. I was really blown away by how beautifully all that was handled and just like the emotional complexity that added value to certain things that I didn't think that I would find any value in. And that is probably one of the most important qualities of this story that has really stuck with me quite a bit. God, I'm so glad you said that. I'm glad you feel that way. That's, you know, that's what, it, that's what the hope is. And, you know, people should have any experience that they have, but I'm, 
uh, very selfishly grateful that you had that one. So thanks. I'm going to end with my most selfish question on this list. <laughs> yeah. Escape room three. Mm -hmm. When is it going to happen? <laughs> <sighs> that's a that's a loaded question. I have no idea. I cannot tell you because I don't know. I mean, people keep asking me and I'm like, if I had an answer, I swear to God, I would say I would I would leak. I would leak it. But I have nothing to leak. I have nothing to leak. I feel bad that people keep asking you that, but at the same time, it makes me so incredibly happy that the demand is there because I'm rooting so hardcore for that franchise. Those set pieces are something else, just like creativity through the roof. I can't get enough of it. I also can't get enough of your work. Huge, huge, huge congratulations on Bones and all. And I look forward to welcoming, welcoming you back to Collider Ladies Night in the near future, because I know you're going to keep delivering super big. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to be back again and talk about more things and see you, meet you in person. Thank you.